Good morning, folks. September climate report from NOAA is out. Link below for you to peruse. Got some good stuff in there. Coral sickening so rapidly it looks like contagion, but experts say it's the change in climate. Related article here on oceanic acidity. Starwater makes a return to the news, literally, and they also plan to look for H2O at the North Pole of the Moon. South magnetic pole of Earth is not shifting as much as the north, but it is creeping towards Australia, which is right up here. I show you this because the region took an unusually large earthquake in the 1200-hour UTC yesterday. We also had significant quakes in the Gulf of California, the oceanic spreading rift in the West Indian Ocean, and another near Antarctica south of the Americas. A 3.9 in Quebec is peculiar, along with that 4.5 near Algeria. Also had a 4.2 near South Island, New Zealand. Yesterday, we told you Olivia was toast. In addition to watching weakening rotation, we saw she was headed for cooler waters. That's a death sentence for tropical storms and developing cyclonic lows. Also interesting to note how warm the water is near the north edge of the Gulf Stream. I wasn't aware it got that warm at this time of year. Also, we have an isolated heat zone in the Pacific. This anomaly is kind of peculiar, but it's been there for days. Anywho, here's Praparoon dancing in the West Pacific, trying to decide which area to flood first. The two tropical lows in the Atlantic are a bit of a computer nightmare, and frankly, we don't know what either is going to do. Not so for Australia. You got more cold coming as that high pressure system brings all the cold north and sparks showers at the top edge there. Here's the rest of the week's temperature forecast for Europe, cooler west and north with a warmer southeast, in addition to the next four days precipitation likelihoods as well. We had yet another geomagnetic storm last night as the coronal hole stream really began to batter us. Plasma was penetrating our shields around the same time as the storm. Our baseline resonance has moved to multiple harmonics induced together. More runaway F2 ionization with a thankfully calmer F1 layer. Yellow is the solar wind speed. You can see the slow ramp up all day yesterday. While CMEs hit fastest particles first, coronal holes stream solar wind over large areas as they rotate can often be strongest near the end. We are also beginning to take M flares as two leviathan sunspots turn the eastern limb. This one here on the south appears to be smaller yet more active right now. It's still behind the limb, just barely beginning to crest now. By tomorrow we should have a good visual intensity with a full magnetic picture a day later. Up north is somewhat of a different story. Before turning the limb it fired a flare so big we registered it as an M2.3 and it was facing away from Earth. But since turning the limb she has let the south steal the show. Don't sleep on her though, she's big and has the potential to develop delta spots at any time. We can't roll out big flares from either group. Additionally, we have another dark coronal hole set to face Earth tonight and send its powerful stream this way. Three days from the heliocentric conjunction of Mercury and Mars. Eyes open, no fear, it's just past 6 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news, folks. Be safe.